What's the moral of the story of all this? What's the what's the what, what is the here, here's here's the here's here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing I want every single one of you. If there's one thing that I want every single one of you to always take away was you evaluate my ebook, my video series, business plan, if we're working together, whatever. If there's one fundamental principle that I want you to take away and say, you know what? Joel has made this abundantly clear. I don't want you to be fixated on the fact that I'm an international sex symbol. I don't want you to focus in on my exterior beauty. The takeaway is specifically you are no one's, no one's B-I-T-C-H. Joel, I can't believe you said that. I didn't say it. I spelled it. I didn't say it. I spelled it. But Joel, you're supposed to be a Christian. Yeah, I know. But I didn't say it. I spelled it. But Joel, that came from your heart. Yes, it did. That I'll admit. That I will admit. I do not want you to be anyone's B-I-T-C-H. Bottom line. This is why... Do not stray from the plan. I can't afford the groceries. I can't afford your gas. It's my inflation across the nation. 81 million votes my ass. Hey, 81 million votes my ass. Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group. You are the broker.com and home care access. I'm going to try to be very fast today. I have, I'm even taking off my jacket because I'm going to try to be fast. But you never know because this is so delish. So delish. Uh, I got, I'm going to share a screenshot with you from a client provider that I've been working with for a long time. This is from um, a text from one of his employees who's quitting. And I figured I'd just wait and do this later. But sure enough, today, this morning... Uh, working with another client provider, and he has an employee, kind of, not the same, but the same issue with the employee, threatening, I'm going to the Department of Labor. It's funny, when you don't bow down, kiss their kiss their butt, they all threaten you with going to the Department of Labor. Um, so I figured, hey man, if I got if I got two people with the same, similar complaints here in the like two or three day span, I figure I better, I'm going to just make the video now. Because I'm sure some of you guys are having it, because about probably easily... Easily once a month, I see something like this, where employee disgruntled employees. Cause we've talked about it in previous videos, you know, dealing with disgruntled disgruntled employees. And look, it's not it's not just an EMT or you know, it's any business, any business. You got this stuff, but this is this is important because this one is so delicious. To this is why you constantly have to protect yourself. You know, I talk about, you, you got to put yourself in a position where you literally can have your cake and eat it too. Literally have your cake and eat it too. What I mean by that is, for those of you who I work with, you know, hey, I'm all about your policies and procedures, documenting things, how we structure things, our methodologies. Uh, and you've got to be very black and white regimented and how you implement those policies and procedures i.e. you can't be slack with this guy and tight with this other guy you can't be like that this guy well he's been with me longer can no, 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 i can't do that can't do that you got to be very black and white with your rules your policies your procedures how you structure things yet at the same time at the same time and many of you have heard me talk about this you have to always have enough gray area in there to give yourself an escape hatch there's a there's this is where the the uh when i was at west point i was a pre-law major and i love i love law and studying law my mother always told me i should be an attorney but why would i want to go be an attorney i can make more money doing my own thing than trying to serve somebody else so um but i just love the i love this is why i love seeing stuff like this it's just so delish People think they're going to have you by the balls, but if you have your things tight, uh, you're covered. So literally, you want to be able to have your cake and eat it too. 
Be very clear and articulate in your rules, your policies, your, your procedures, your expectations. Be at the same time, always have enough a gray area where you have an escape hatch. Um, this is why I've talked about in previous videos, especially when you're doing uh, interviews. Always be careful in the things you say, no question. And there's a time and a place to put things in writing. Let me say that again. There's a time and a place to put things in writing. Let me jump in here and I'll start to dissect this and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. So this is from a schizo. So schizo texts my client provider. And my client provider is a good dude. Good dude. Been working with him for several years. He knows I love him. Um, I got to bust his balls routinely because he's one of these guys. He loves chasing, chasing down shiny objects. So this is why it keeps you on retainer because a lot of times I got to pull back the reins. There's times I poke and prod him to go do certain things and I'm still waiting on him to do some, some certain things that he's not taking advantage of yet, but uh, he needs to. But there's other times where I got to pull back those reins and, uh, and he appreciates it. Again, I love this guy. The reason why I love it is because he's self-motivated, self-starter. He's not going to let Moss grow on his feet. He's going to move, which is phenomenal. But at the same time, sometimes i got to pull back the reins. I'd rather be in a position where you got to pull back the reins versus having to poke and prod someone constantly to try to get them to take action. Um, so anyways, I help steer the ship and guide him on certain uh, things. But there's certain things that, look, at the end of the day, it's still his business, so he's going to do what he wants to do. Sometimes he leaves himself exposed when you start chasing the shiny objects or when you try you try to outthink and this isn't this isn't just a pick on this one client provider, this is for so many of you. You think you're gonna outsmart the system. And all you do is expose yourself to a loss, whether it be financial or time-wise or effort-wise. Uh, expose yourself to potential liability or just expose yourself to particular drama that you just don't need to deal with. So let me dive into this. So Schizo texts him and says, hey, I guess I'm just going to have to quit working for you. Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want you to specifically say I quit because if you do, that's almost black and white for the Department of Labor. So regardless of the circumstances, you quit. You quit. So you're going to be very hard pressed to try to get your uh, unemployment. So love it. Love that that schizo starts out like that. I guess I'm just going to have to quit working for you. I'm not going to be forced or manipulated to work on Sundays. Dude, my client provider is a painfully nice guy. Painfully nice guy. Good dude. There, this is just part of the whole schizo emotional drama nonsense. And you'll see more of it as we go through I'm not going to be forced or manipulated to work on Sundays. Dude, he's not forcing her. Not forcing her, scheduling her, well within your 40 hours, all that kind of good stuff. Especially when at the interview you told me there wouldn't be Sundays and there would be occasionally Saturdays, which I don't mind. I can assure you, my client provider never said that. Um, we've had a million and one different discussions. <laughs> I mean, a million and one. I, I've been working with him for a couple of years. Um, he just. This is why I talk about in the interviews of the transportation for transportation. You've got to tell people, look, this is the transportation industry. No two days are the same. Uh, there's no guarantee. If you don't, if you can't be flexible, if you're not willing to work weekends or work some evenings, this isn't the place for you. Boom. The upside to it is, look, you get to go, you don't have to be stuck behind a cubicle, you get to go out and engage with different people every single day, so if you're a people person, this is a great deal for you, versus if you want to be a hermit and just hide in a cubicle, this isn't the job for you. you got to be flexible, you got to be willing to work. Um, so he never said, you, you'll never work Sundays. That's so stupid, because he does hospital discharges, ER discharges, makes good money, all that kind of good stuff, so especially because he's already doing that work, why would he possibly tell Schizo or any other prospective employee, you don't have to work Sundays? It's just absolutely stupid. But again, Schizo, how do you spell Schizo? So Schizo is just all emotional here. Um, let's see. Also, I know my check is wrong again. When you asked me to work Sunday, it was... A last-minute thing and I said I really don't feel like working today 
and you told me that if I did, you'd pay me double time on top of that, there's a few hours missing. First of all, I can assure you, my boy never told Schizo I'm going to pay you double time. You're never going to do that. First of all, you're never paying one double time. Um, that would be the stupidest thing you could do. And not only did he not tell her that, he never would tell her that because it's going to set the precedence. And you're going to see why even for, as we further drill down this a little further, I'll further explain. But you would never pay double time. Uh, look, this isn't that type of business. Sorry. So whether it's the home care, NEMT, well, it's even applicable to broker business, but you're never going to pay double time. Okay, you look, you, this, is, this isn't the government. This isn't the government. This is your own business where, guess what? we got to make decisions on the margin. We got to make sure we increase the top line and the bottom line. We don't sacrifice the bottom line. This isn't like the government where you could just keep writing hot checks and going thirty-four trillion dollars in debt. Can't do that. So there is no double time. We know that. We know there's no double time. And why would I pay you double time if you still haven't even exceeded forty hours in the work week? Why would I pay you double time? Just stupid. But typical schizo emotional nonsense. Um, was any of this documented? So when he did he tell you? Did he tell you? In writing, they give you anything in writing that when he hires you at your interview or anything, they give you anything that says, oh, if you do this, you work on a Saturday, you get double time. No, none of that exists. So you're going to have a very hard play when you go to the Department of Labor. Um, and the last check, there was about five hours missing, and it wasn't the five hours for working on that Sunday. Five hours. Now, Who's keeping track of this? Stay tuned. Who's keeping track of this? There's been a lot of issues with the app. And the last check, there was about five hours missing. And it wasn't the five hours for working that Sunday. There's been a lot of issues with the app. Listen, so many of you, and everybody has their own approach, methodology, motivation. You fall prey to all these fancy dispatching systems that are all endorsed by the Med Medicaid brokers. You think like, oh, I gotta keep up with the technology. Okay. Oh, I gotta do it so I can upload my trips to Motive Care or whoever the broker is. Okay. All you do is paint yourself into a box and put you put yourself in a position such as this. You're using the the slick, the slick software. Oh, but you don't understand, Joel. It auto routes my calls. Stupid. Oh, but you don't understand, Joel. You don't understand, Joel. I get to more quickly upload my trips. To the broker. Foolish. Oh, but Joel, you don't understand. I have to do it. I have to do it or Mass is going to cut me off. Mass requires me to use this. Another broker in Communist New York. You're putting yourself in a situation where you are empowering your drivers to quote unquote manage their own clock. They get to manage their own clock, if you will. How many times have I said in my ebook, my videos, my video series, everything, everything, and I do mean everything. E V E R Y T H I N G. Everything must flow through your dispatchers. Everything. That's why your most critical position in your company is your dispatcher. Fact. You want to make money? You have to good have a good internal office. 
You want to be efficient, do more with less, you have to have a good internal office, whether it's you. And I know it's tough. I try, I get it. I get it. Especially if you're small, you're starting, you know, just you and your husband and wife, starting by yourself, starting, oh, we only got two vehicles, we only got three vehicles. Oh, I'm doing, I got to drive sometimes. I'm the dispatcher too. I'm taking the call. I get all that. Been there, seen that, done that. Mark that in the, the W column. Got it. Done it. Everything must flow through your dispatchers to ensure that you're profitable, you're efficient, you're effective, you have good logistics, and to protect you from insanity such as this. You try to get slick. You chase the shiny, the shiny objects, you get slick. I got to use this software or else they're not going to pay me. You use their systems. You use their systems, A, you give a back door to the brokers. Because if the, the brokers have access, go read, go read the fine print. Go read the fine print. Why, why is it that Motive Care used to be known as Logisticrap? They had to change their name to rebrand their business because their, their brand sucks. Why are they listed publicly as a software platform? I'm just asking for a friend. So many of these brokers, I mean, bro these brokers are popping up at every street corner, and what do they all feature? Their app, their app, their software platform. How many platforms do you got to have your drivers use? This is that's gain compliance to get your money. It's flipping insanity. You give them backdoor access to your entire operation. Previous videos, we talked about these software platforms here in New York because when they changed over things at the 1st of April, so many people uh, ha had to get in, get involved and use a different dispatching system other than dispatching made easy so they could be compliant with Mass. And uh, guess what? Now Mass is nickel and diming them, nickel and diming them on their mileage, their calls, how they're routing things, nickel and diming them. And now that Mass got the contract for upstate and downstate on a tighter budget, they're going to further squeeze the providers in New York. Topic. Different topic, different day. Talked about some of that before. You need to be able to have your cake and eat it too. Eat it too. Everything flows through your dispatch. This is why your dispatch, your methodology needs to be tight. You document and you put so much information in writing, then there are specific things you don't put in writing. So you can have your cake and eat it too. I'll finish this and I'll, then I'll continue on with the discussion. There's been a lot of issues with the app. Chase the shiny objects. Now you're in risk of this chick running to the Department of Labor. She's telling you. She's, she's threatening you with the Department of Labor. Uh, so obviously none of the guys work on Sundays either. Clear indication that schizo here, they openly talk. This is why you can't show preference. Oh, but you don't understand. Susie's like family. We had her over for Thanksgiving dinner. Wait till, till Susie isn't happy anymore and then she goes schizo on you. Or wait till Susie starts stealing cash, skimming off the top. Seeing that a million and one times over these many years. Oh, but she's, she's like our daughter. Well, she's like my sister. Till she's stealing, till she's threatening you by going to the Department of Labor. So obviously none of the guys want to work either. Got a little collusion going here. We're running a, a union. Running you. I talked about this in previous videos. Some people thought I was crazy overreacting because back in the day, I remember I had a guy who came. He used to do over the road trucking. Was part of a union. Left there. Got a divorce from his wife. Wanted to stay close to his daughter. Get that. I actually respect that. And uh, so he took a job with us. Didn't take long for me to realize this is a union guy. Union mentality. Five o'clock rolls around, 4.59, here he is, one foot out the door. He don't care. He's going to upset the balance. See, I have other people that will work on rotation, work on the evenings. This guy's a cancer. Sure enough, he comes to me and, hey, boss, man, I was thinking, uh, you know, I think that maybe, you know, the drivers at the time, we had like two dozen drivers. I think we need to have some type of like representation or something like that. You know, someone who can kind of you know talk to the guys and, and you know and then come and present the issues to you. I said, "Oh, you mean like a union?" He said, "Yeah." And his eyes all lit up. I said, "Absolutely, effing not." Well, what do you mean? I said, "No, this isn't a union. Ain't gonna happen." 
I knew right there and then he's on borrowed time. I'm going to get him out. And I did. Um, so we got this little collusion going here, building steam, talking. Hey, are you unhappy too? All oh, the other guys, they don't want to drive on Sundays. Are you unhappy? Are you unhappy? Oh, we're, we don't like this. Uh, I'm not going to play this game and be bullied by somebody that's the age of whatever. I don't know. I, don't, she, I didn't see the rest of it. Don't know. Don't care. She, dude, first of all, again, my client provider, love him. Super nice guy. He ain't bullying nobody. Super nice guy. But again, we got schizo here. We got schizo. This is a danger to you. This tax, the best part is, so many things are un uncovered. First of all, she says I'm quitting. Okay, good. That makes things good for the Department of Labor. But here's the problem. She's going to go to the Department of Labor. And at that point in time, even, even if everything is tight, everything is tight. The Department of Labor is going to come and investigate. They're going to come audit you. They're going to come audit you. She's going to the Department of Labor. We know this. They're going to audit you. Depending on how much she chirps, how much she squeals, the squeak wheel gets the oil, will determine how far she goes, how far the Department of Labor goes. And look, I experienced it. I've talked about it in previous videos. I had a former uh, POS driver, just a straight up POS. Interviewed well during the couple of weeks we did the driver training, uh, the two or three weeks, great job. And once he got off on his own, okay, a little slow going, but he was going okay for a couple of days, whatever, and wasn't still wasn't sure about this. And that. Okay, we could overcome all that stuff. I want to say maybe he was with us for a total of a month, maybe two months tops, if that. That's being very generous. I don't think it was that long. Um... But the, the issues I had to counsel him for was he was chippy with his jibbies. He was talking back to my dispatchers who were female. So clearly this guy had a problem following orders from a female. At the time I had three people in my office. I always had two people who would rotate. One would, do it, one would cover most of the dispatch in the morning. The other would be doing the billing and invoicing. They'd switch in the day. Then I had a third girl who would also fill in with them as well. She'd also be doing accounts receivables, accounts payable, things like that. So I always had three people rotating and worked out really well. So he, this guy, uh, Doug, true POS, had a problem with my uh, female staff. And um, so after I fired him, I fired, I counseled him two or three times about getting chippy with his mouth. Um, so when I fired him, it was soon thereafter, it wasn't long, uh, demands that we owed him a number of hours, maybe it was something like five hours, I don't know, I think it would make, I don't know, whatever it was, it was a couple hundred bucks, so, uh, which I clearly didn't know, well the difference is, not only did he go to the Department of Labor, he kept going to the Department of Labor, I found out later on, because when the Department of Labor came, there was two of them, two auditors, two inspectors, They and they come in like the Gestapo, when they come to audit you, they're coming in like the Gestapo, because you're already... It's just like tenancy laws. Everything favors the tenant, the owner, you're at fault. Same thing when it comes to the Department of Labor, the employer is always wrong. The employer is always the bad guy. You have to prove your innocence, bottom line. It's one of those things, show me the, show me the man, I'll find the crime, same thing. Show me the business, I'll find the crime, same thing. Um, so they come in like the Gestapo. And... Um, I remember it was the second guy. It wasn't until later on. I think I saw him at a store or something like that, the second guy. One of them was good cop, one was bad cop. The good cop, who was the quiet guy, I saw him when the whole thing was over, months, months, months later, and he told me, no, the only reason we kept coming is because that guy, Doug, the POS former driver, kept calling, demanding, all that kind of stuff. So they come to my office. They First they give me a notification saying, hey, you owe him money. No, I don't. I sent copies of pay stubs and whatever we had, and boom. But this guy, Doug, kept being persistent. Now, Schizo could choose to do the same thing. And now when they come, they're going to come in, and they're looking through everything. This thing went on for several months. So by the time they came to my office, they wanted to see everything. Now, this was the best thing that happened. This was the best thing that happened. God works in supernatural ways. So I would pay my people, at the time, I was paying them 
40 hours. Anything above that, I give you time and a half. Not double time like Schizo is claiming. No, I give you time and a half. Plus, anything you do in the evenings, I was paying them good commission. This is a really good story. Uh, many of you may remember it. So, Department of Labor comes in like the Gestapo. And I remember that the, the bad guy, the tough guy, the BTG, uh, big tough guy, um, small little squirrely Napoleon-esque, had a little man complex, I'm a big guy, okay, you're going to take down the big guy, you know, had that little Napoleon complex, you're a big tough guy, whatever. I remember he uh, was going to, somehow he and I, he saw that I wasn't going to back down, and he threatened me with something. But what he failed to realize is, I'm just not a sucker. I'm just not a sucker. I'm not a B-I-T-C-H. I already did my homework. I knew at the end of the day that even if I did, I didn't owe him the wages, and I got, I got out of it, I'll explain that in a second. But let's say I did owe you the back wages. The most you can ever find me for, this is, this is many years ago, so I don't know what it is now. But back then, I did my homework, buddy. The most you could find me it's a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Come on, I blow that in the night. I don't care. So he tried to go the little Napoleon BTG. Tried to go tough guy on me, and I, I didn't say f off, but I said f off. And um, but he didn't end up finding me. I never got fined the thousand dollars. But I, he was absolutely stunned and shocked because I wasn't just gonna. <laughs> he was just floored because I didn't. Dude, the most you could ever do is find me $1,000, so F you. But they can come in, when they come in and they do this audit, it is exhaustive. Now, if they do find something that's legit, then they can hit you with big money. I knew my show was already tight. One thing that killed them, absolutely killed them, I layered my business. I layered my business. What do I mean by that? Like I talk about, you have your cake and you eat it too. I layered my business. I mentioned I had three girls. I always had three girls. By this time in my business where I was, I always had three people in my office. All with different roles and responsibilities, and they would overlap. It absolutely flustered the heck out of this little Napoleon that he would ask me many things. And there was times, like, I'm going to be honest, there was times I just straight up bold face lied. I said, mm, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. I let them make the decision, talking about my three girls out in the office. What do you mean they make that? Well, they, well, she monitors that. She monitors the hours. She does this. She does that. It was killing him, killing him, that I had layered and insulated myself from those making those daily intricate decisions. I laid out the policies and procedures for sure, but I wasn't. I wasn't. You think I'm monitoring the hours every day? I said everything flows through your dispatch, which it does. I didn't say everything flows through you, the business owner. It doesn't. There's times in my business, look, everyone knows, uh, every September, until I started coaching football, every September I would spend the month in, in, in Italy, year after year. I'm able to do that because I ran a good show, right? And because I'm not chasing low rent Medicaid broker work, I'm able to grow and scale my business. Again, different topic, different discussion, different day. Um, so it was killing them. So long story short, they come in like the Gestapo, which can happen to you when you got a schizo like this. She's going to the Department of Labor. Department of Labor, depending on how much she, she uh, squeaks, uh, will determine how much and how aggressively they come in. So after a period of months, again, this went on for months, after a period of months, little Napoleon, with the Napoleon complex, the Department of Labor guy, calls me, he says, hey, are you available Whatever day. I remember, I remember for some odd reason, I remember he said 9.30. I said, okay, yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. I'll be in my office. Come on by. And he told me, he goes, yeah, well, we've reached a decision. You're going to be available. On, maybe it was the next day. I don't remember. But you're going to be available at 9.30. Yep, I'll be there. So he shows up at 9.30. We meet in my conference room. Comes in. This, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. This is how God works in supernatural ways. He says... So here's, uh, here's our determining. Um, and again, they're going to find something. They're going to find something. He goes, so here's the situation. Um, we've gone through everything. We've gone through all the hours and the stuff. And, we, and, he, and it was, again, it was killing him, killing him. That he, would, he, and he interviewed my three people up front, my girls. 
He interviewed them, and it was killing him that they. I gave them so much decision making ability, and that they, everything was square. It's killing them. So he says to me in my conference room, he says, uh, "Well, what we." determined is you don't owe him the POS dog the POS former driver you don't owe him that money everything was square on that and he legitimately and honestly had a moment of clarity and honesty and he said to me he goes we, he said we don't like to say this too often which bothers me why would you not want to tell an, an employer this it further underscores that in the department of labor eyes you the employer are always at fault you have to prove your innocence the victim is always the employee. This is why your stuff needs to be tight. He legitimately had a moment of clarity. He says, well, we don't like to admit this too much. He says, but you're overpaying your drivers. Dude, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I said, what'd you say? He goes, well, I know you don't consider yourself a taxi service. But according to the New York State Department of Labor, we identify you as a taxi service, which means you could pay straight wages. You don't have to pay time and a half over for And he's sorry. He's like, you could tell he's just somber. You don't have to pay time and a half for anything over 40 hours. I said, say that again. He goes, we identify you as a taxi service. And you could just pay straight wages regardless of number of hours. I said, could I have that in writing? And he reluctantly, and he had his, his trifold thing open. He reluctantly go. he slides across the table. He turns his head, he slides across the table. He goes, he goes, it's right here. I said, can I go make a copy of this? Or, or, or no, I said, can I have a copy of that? He goes, I can't give you a copy of that, but if you want to make a copy of it, it's right here. He killed him. Killed him. Killed him. It killed him because I was insulated, interviewed my people, asked them questions, asked me a ton of things, which I knew the answers to, but I wasn't going to give it to them. Go ask them. Go ask them. Nah, that's of, low, that's of no consequence to me. I don't care. Oh, I don't jump. I don't jump through your, your hoops. I'm not intimidated. Because uh, I already knew you could only find me up to $1,000. F you. And now you have to legitimately tell me that I'm overpaying my drivers? I run into the, I take his book, I go into the, to my, uh, my office where I had the copy machine, zing, 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 make copies of like three or four pages or whatever it was. It was awesome. So what I did is I used that and I put a memorandum together and notified all my drivers. I'm paying straight wages from here and out. You got a problem with it? Here, right here. Department of Labor, New York State Department of Labor, boom, right here, right here. Here's where you find it. However, if you continue to perform well, I'll give you bonuses, i.e., when we were invoicing certain people, we always had like a five-question uh, questionnaire that we would in insert with invoices. And if it came back positive and there was a place for you to write down notes, if, and that's how we would de determine the uh, employee of the month. So if we kept getting good reports, you're always on time, I always gave you bonuses, that type of deal. It was such a coup de grace. Here's, here's the caveat to the whole thing. I send a letter to this guy, Doug, thanking him for what he did. Because he just saved me thousands of dollars a month. He saved me. Th what he meant for ill, God used for good. He saved me thousands of dollars a month because now I'm paying straight wages instead of time and a half. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Saved me thousands of dollars. I literally sent him a thank you letter. Thanking him for reporting me to the Department of Labor and how much I appreciate it. And after a couple of days, he sends me back a response saying, Praise be to God, that's good news. What a fake and a phony farce. I mean, it's. It, it, <sighs> I could write a doctoral dissertation just on that fake and phony nonsense. What's the moral of the story of all this? What's the. What's the what, what is the. Here, here's, here's the. Here's, here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing I want every single one of you. If there's one thing that I want every single one of you to always take away, was you evaluate my ebook, my video series, business plan, if we're working together, whatever. If there's one fundamental principle that I want you to take away and say, you know what? Joel has made this abundantly clear. 
I don't want you to be fixated on the fact that I'm an international sex symbol. I don't want you to focus in on my exterior beauty. The takeaway is specifically you are no one's, no one's B-I-T-C-H. Joel, I can't believe you said that. I didn't say it. I spelled it. I didn't say it. I spelled it. But Joel, you're supposed to be a Christian. Yeah, I know. But I didn't say it. I spelled it. But Joel, that came from your heart. Yes, it did. That I'll admit. That I will admit. I do not want you to be anyone's B-I-T-C-H. Bottom line. This is why do not stray from the plan. I know everybody, uh, you, you get so fixated on these Medicaid brokers and their stupid software platforms and all you do is empower these employees for when they clock in, when they clock out. Is there a chance they can clock in and out early or late? Is there a chance of that? Y'all. Yeah. Is that how you come up with a discrepancy of five hours? Could be. This is why you don't follow the stupidity of all these organizations pushing their national accreditation. Again, just go look at their sponsor page. It's all Medicaid brokers. What do you think they're going to teach you to do? They're going to teach you to be a good, compliant sharecropper, to be subservient. What I'm telling you is, you are no one's B-I-T-C-H. I don't care if you got one vehicle, five vehicles, 20 vehicles, or 50 vehicles. You're no one's B-I-T-C-H. You are in business to make money. Not squeak by, not hope there's a, that there's enough money at the end of the day when there's, when there's no leftover of month. You don't want to be short on money and have more month than you do money. You want to fill your coffers, bottom line, which means you don't have any shame or remorse in what you're charging people or how you're charging them. When you have a facility, you have a broker, you have any type of an organization trying to demand certain things of you, F you. If it is contrary to our methodology, if it's not profitable, it's not sustainable, uh, no, absolutely not. This is why I so enjoy being involved with so many of you in either editing contracts that like a hospital or a major medical facility will, will, will issue. I'll edit the heck out of them. A nursing facility, similar type thing. If they're, oh, our legal department, our legal department. Who's trying to reach this 21-year-old Olympic athlete? Um... You're no one's B-I-T-C-H. I talked about in previous videos, things like, we're never going that 60. You're not gonna demand that we do this, we did that. <laughs> you may have a bigger budget, you may have bigger infrastructure, you may have uh, more employees, greater capacity, whatever. But I'm not your B-I-T-C-H. If I'm sitting at the table with you, I've earned the right to be here, bottom line. So this is why it's critical that we build your business the right way. Put yourself in the position where you're not someone's B-I-T-C-H. Empower yourself. And play this out long term. Let's say you start your business tomorrow. You're going to be in a different position a year from now. Two years from now, three years from now. Now we got three years under our belt and how many thousands of transports and how many more vehicles, how much increased capacity. Now we should be a ball and shot caller. Now we start running the table. It so amazes me. And I know I'm going off on tangents. I tried to be quick. How'd that work out for me? It so amazes me how many people will contact us after five years, after X number of years in the game, and they're still doing just broker work. Just broker work. I have people who we've worked with who are doing $100,000 a month with a broker and they're pretty much making no money. But here's the good news. They're using their apps. They're using their dispatching software platform so they could upload the trips. So they could upload them quicker. Because oh, they've outsmarted this system. 
They chase those shiny objects. When you do that, you have no insulation. There's no separation. Where I talked about I had my three girls there who were a huge buffer for me by design. Yeah, but that costs more money. I want a dispatching software system that I get to upload my trips trips more quickly. They oh look at this. It does this all this auto routing. This is I've never seen wow this it, by this dispatching software system, it gives me back massages, toe rubs. It is exposing you to potential liability. How much nonsense and aggravation are you going to have to deal with? The Department of Labor, when they came through, what was the only suggestion? Couldn't find me for it. What was the only suggestion that he complained about? That we weren't keeping track of the hours after hours on the weekends. But he, when he saw how much we were paying our drivers and how much money they were making, he had no complaint. He had no complaint. No complaint whatsoever. But his only suggestion was, I would just suggest that you just you know put the, the, the hours and how many hours each of your drivers are working when they're serving on call in the evenings and weekends. Just for safety, you know, just to further protect yourself. And I thought to myself, protect myself from who? If you're the Department of Labor, who who would I who who beyond you do I need to protect myself? Clearly we didn't take a suggestion or deploy that that stupid strategy. But it's like, that's all you got. That's all you got. That's all you got. How much do you think I just wanted to do dirty things to this guy? <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a fun kind of way. Because it's like, you got nothing. You got nothing. Came in like the Gestapo. Former schizo. Goes to the Department of Labor. Oh, you got me. Not only did I not pay anything, because I had a tight show, great methodology, I had three buffers out there, and you saved me how many thousands of dollars a month? So beautiful. But you, watching this video, who I know I've gone way long, here is, I figured I'd go like 10 or 15 minutes, who knows how long this has been. Keep getting cute. Chase your shiny objects. Chase your shiny objects and then live in hope and change. Live in hope and change like, oh, well, I hope maybe I should just give her money and she'll go away. Will she? Could you give her money and she'll go away? Will she? She's still chirping in the ears of these other guys because he has half a dozen drivers. Maybe she's chirping in the ears. Maybe she run her own little coup like the one guy I told you about. Is she trying to be her own little union leader? Is she doing that? Now, she does go to the Department of Labor. How much aggravation is that going to be for you when they come in like the Gestapo? Because they will. Because they will. But, hey, you outsmarted the system. You, you, you didn't want to follow the strategies that we talk about, whether it be in my ebook or overall. But, hey, you got the shiny object. You're compliant with the Medicaid brokers. You do you. You do you. And, again, I'm not just talking about this, this particular transportation provider. So many of you in general. So, anyways, I've gone way long as per usual. I gotta start like putting a timer or something here. Because I know some people don't like my long videos. And trust me, that means nothing to me. Um, I just go off on tangents because I get so... I love, I love this type of stuff. I love this type of stuff. So, anyways, it's time for this 21-year-old, 6 foot 4 I self-identify as being 215 pounds. Uh, Olympic athlete, shooting for fourth place, so I could signal more virtue. It's time for me to bounce. So I hope you learned something from this rant. If you stayed all, if you stayed all the way to the end, you're a beast, and I love you. Stay tuned for more. When you do, I'll see you at the top. I can't afford the groceries. I can't afford your gas. It's Biden flesh and cross the nation. 81 million votes, my.